welcome back to my channel i tried to make a nice little setup by moving my side table over here but the lighting is absolutely horrible because the sun is going down and i was like maybe i should wait to do this video until tomorrow but um i'm impatient so i thought i'd do it now if you don't know who i am my name is tara i like doing deep dives and for today's deep dive i'm going to be talking about the criminally overhated and underappreciated movie sucker punch sucker punch was introduced to me a few years ago by a friend and at a first watch i thought it was good and i liked it but i didn't really understand all the layers that went into it and so i watched it like several more times after over the course of the year and it's now one of my favorite movies i have a greater understanding of what the commentary is about all the layers that are with in this movie but even now i still can hardly grasp everything in this movie because there's just so much to digest it's such a fantastic movie and i think it's one of zack snyder's best movies i know that's a really bold statement to make but i think it, i think it's his best movie so let's get into it it looks like i'm reading from a script it's because i am i wrote like 10 pages and i don't want to miss any points so i'm gonna be looking down at my computer a lot Sucker punch is one of the most overhated and underappreciated movies of our time when hollywood puts out complex movies like this society's instant reaction is to reject them due to a lack of understanding take this account for example sucker punch is nothing more than a steaming pile of maggot filled festering misogynist crap trying to masquerade as female empowerment. With this account in particular, what annoys me is they put feminists in their name and they're kind of acting as the front and the driving voice of all feminists. And it kind of irritates me because me as a feminist love this movie because it's a feminist standpoint. So it's kind of annoying to me that they're kind of acting as the voice of feminism here by creating this video. But they did turn off their comments, I think because people shot them down and it was released a few years ago. So I'm going to be kind of deep everything they said in this video because to be honest I don't think they actually watched it I'm not even gonna bore you with what the movie's about because there really is no cohesive plot I think they only watched the trailer and saw the outfits and just had a blanket statement and idea of what it was which is completely not what this movie is about so trying to understand the movie and what it has to say most people decided just to hate it instead because that was the easier option To a certain degree, hatred for this movie really is easier than just trying to understand it. Let me explain what I mean by that. This movie is very complex. And I mean so complex that after watching it eight times over the past year, I still have a hard time putting it all together and understanding every reference and detail within this movie. There's just so much to digest, but the overall arching message is simple. Fight. Yes, literally. Throughout the movie, highlighted specifically in the very beginning and the very ending, we are told that you have all the weapons you need. Now fight. On the surface, one might interpret this to mean fighting monsters, robots, and dragons, considering the characters seemingly fought all three within the movie, but no, this movie is a message for women to fight against exploitation. That's right, this movie is a feminist with that. Contrary to what this account was saying, I'm gonna give you a very short summary of the movie really quick. Sucker Punch opens with a sequence of events that make up Baby Doll's trauma. Baby Doll is deemed to be the main character at first glance, which I will reinterpret for you later. After her mother's death, Baby Doll and her sister are left under the care of their abusive stepfather, who tries to kill, as well as the implication that he planned to sexually assault both of them. Baby Doll runs to her sister's defense and accidentally kills her, and the stepfather uses her death as an excuse to lock away Baby Doll in a mental hospital to cover up his mess. While in the mental hospital, Baby Doll is introduced to Blondie and Amber, Sweet Pea, and her sister, Rocket. After briefly highlighting Baby Doll's first few days in the mental institution, we are shown her about to receive a lobotomy. The scene immediately cuts to Sweet Pea and the girls in a brothel, to which all the scenes we had seen prior are turned on their heads and we start anew. We are taken with them on their five-day journey filled with fear, rage, and excitement as they work to escape from the brothel to which only Baby Doll and Sweet Pea are able to leave. When they find their exit blocked by a group of men, Baby Doll sacrifices herself to allow Sweet Pea a chance to escape, and we are given a sucker punch back into reality, literally. We come back to see Baby Doll post the bottomy, wrongly handed to the orderly who had abused her and the other girls. He becomes enraged when he realizes Baby Doll isn't present and cannot please him as he once wished, and he is then arrested. The camera reveals Baby Doll in a state of catatonic paradise and bliss. Baby Doll and Sweet Pea were freed by her lobotomy. Pretty surface level, right? Wrong. This movie, as other people have described it, is completely a fantasy. Nothing we see on screen is real. We as an audience are watching a fantasy unfold, that fantasy being Baby Dolls. 
Now, before watching this analysis, I do recommend that you go and watch the movie for yourself if you haven't already. Watching it for the first time really is a treat and a ride. It's really a great movie. Visually stunning. The story is really interesting. There's a lot to unpack and you might end up coming up with your own perspective of what the movie means. That's the beauty of it is everyone has a different perspective and theory. So I recommend you go watch it first because then you'll understand kind of what I'm talking about. I make very specific references in this movie and I don't really want to spoil anything for anybody. And then you can come back and watch this analysis after. Any questions you have, hopefully this video will clear them up. And then any theories you made, hopefully they'll either align or you can offer yours to the conversation. I love talking with people in the comments about different ideas, perspectives, and theories. It's actually what I've been doing the past few days. A lot of people have been commenting on my stuff. I really love reading the things that people have to say. So I'd love for you to offer something to the conversation. So now I'm gonna get into the analysis part of this video. So this movie is narrated by Sweet Pea, who opens the movie by saying, Everyone has an angel, a guardian who watches over us. We can't know what form they'll take. One day old man, next day little girl. But don't let appearances fool you. They can be as fierce as any dragon. Yet they're not here to fight our battles, but to whisper from our heart, reminding that it's us. It's every one of us who holds the power over the worlds we create. Within this quote, she's revealing the entire plot of the movie to us directly. It's about her story of getting saved by her angel, Baby Doll. Yes, I said Baby Doll was the main character of this movie, but that's just how things appear on the surface. Sweet Pea says at the very beginning that she is the star of the show, and she meant that literally. I'm the star of the show, remember? This is her story. We're just simply watching it through Baby Doll's perspective and her fantasy. And I want to circle back to this a little bit more when I get into the section about theories and kind of connect this whole conversation. When Baby Doll finds herself helpless inside the mental institution alongside the other girls, she reimagines that she's instead living inside a brothel. A brothel exists as a parallel to the mental institution. Everything that's happening in the mental institution is also happening inside the brothel. This is confirmed when the doctor reiterates all the Baby Doll's main highlights and adventures at the end of the movie right before her lobotomy. I will admit she has been quite a handful. In just one week here, she stabbed an orderly, started a fire, and and helped another patient to escape. As well as when the main orderly, Blue, tries to take advantage of a lobotomized baby doll to which the other orderlies say, I can't hurt these girls anymore. I'm not, I'm not hurting these girls anymore. I'm not doing this. Guys, don't do this to me now, please. I need her in that chair. Revealing that they have been exploiting the girls for many years, just like they had in the brothel. So the fantasy, is literally everything that's happening in the mental institution just a little bit more glamorized within baby doll's imagination meaning that instead of facing the reality of her situation baby doll opened herself up to a fantasy a more beautiful version of her reality in order to survive within the brothel baby doll and the other girls are expected to please other men that's their purpose of being there this includes the orderlies who are all notably men who are capable of overpowering and assuming dominance over the girls the girls also serve to please the men who visit the brothel in their interests of getting in on the action from this perspective and understanding, the girls are physically helpless. There's no means of escaping, they're unnumbered, and weaponless. They're objectified and sexualized around the clock, being forced to wear short skirts and tight tops for the pleasure of men. This is where I somewhat understand that video's interpretation of the movie because from a service level understanding the girls are just being sexualized throughout the whole movie being forced to wear like short skirts in battle and in the brothel and it's just like a whole objectifying situation but this movie is actually a commentary on objectification and the owning of one's sexuality and that's the reason why they wear these outfits when baby doll is forced to dance for the man she sucks us into another fantasy yes a fantasy within a fantasy that imagines herself as a battle warrior while she's dancing she imagines that she's fighting because to baby doll her dancing makes her powerful. It gives her the upper hand and the freedom to her own body, mind, and soul. Her mind acts as her safe place, almost like a shield, and her body is her sword fighting for her freedom. Her dancing is so mesmerizing that the men are left open mouth, full of lust, and powerless against her. The dancing scenes are included to show us as an audience that while Baby Doll might not be fully in control of her body in these situations, she was in control of her mind, which overpowered all other opposing forces. Her mind gave her the power to take hold over her grim situation and turn 
turn it into one of power, one in which she was strong, brave, and just flat out badass. What I think is so amazing about the fighting scenes is not only the amazing and creative visuals, but the fact that we never get to truly see Baby Doll dance. Not once in the movie do we get to see her do any sort of dancing, even that that's kind of what the whole movie is about. This gives us, the, as an audience, the allure of mystery and the freedom to imagine for ourselves how she would dance while still remembering the immense power that she held in these scenes. I think it's also a gift that instead of watching Baby Doll dance, we get a glimpse into her mind and her fantasy. While the men in the movie are observing her dance in a sexual and alluring manner and objectifying her, we have the gift of seeing into her brilliant and intricate mind, which is the real treasure. While the fighting scenes are not really about her dancing, I still find this to be an amazing element on Zack Snyder's part. It reminds us that even though she is dancing, her mind is what is so valuable. Baby Doll is able to take something sexual and, and exploitative and and turn it into something freeing and empowering. It's to be noted that in these fighting scenes, Baby Doll and the other girls are still sporting the short skirts and tight tops that we see them wear in the brothel. One might see this as many people have called it to be Zack Snyder's 12 year old boy fantasy come to life, intended to please the men in the audience, and honestly they just couldn't be further from the truth. The girls were being sexualized around the clock in Baby Doll's fantasy within the brothel as well as within the reality of the mental institution. There is no escape from the exploitation of their bodies except within the fight scene. In her mind, Baby Doll is able to take the clothes that were originally forced upon her as a means of entertaining the male gaze and rebrand them as battle armor. Within her mind, the clothes they made her wear could be powerful and empowering while she was able to own them as well as accept and own her sexuality. Like I said, the whole point of this movie is to show us a group of girls who turn their exploitation upside down and transform it into empowerment. Each girl does this several times throughout the movie. Amber does it when she uses her sexuality as a weapon to overpower the pimp and steal his lighter. Baby Doll when she uses her dancing as a means of distracting in order to devise a plan against them, Rocket when she seduces the cook in order to steal his knife. This movie is a call for women everywhere to take their sexuality, which was once forced upon them by men, and use it as a weapon, a means to fight those same men. This movie also stands as a feminist tape back of stereotypically male archetypes and media culture. Part of the reason these fight scenes are included is to remind Hollywood that powerful fighting roles can be badass in the hands of women, not just men. During a time where these kinds of movies and stories were created with the intention and ideology that only men could do them justice, Zack Snyder said, shut the fuck up, women can do it too, and gave us these undeniably badass fight scenes. I would even argue that this movie opened doors for the writers to include more empowering female leads, considering movies quickly followed which embody this idea. For example, in 2012, we were given The Hunger Games, Assassination Nation, and the remake of Tomb Raider, which to be fair, came before Sucker Punch, but the point I'm trying to drive is that a surgence of more powerful female leads in action movies began to appear more often after the release of this movie. In 2019, we got Anna, Close and Miss Bella. In 2020, we got Enola Holmes, Birds of Prey, Wonder Woman 1984, Monster Hunter, Ava, Shadow in the Cloud, and Becky. And in 2021, Resident Evil, a Black Widow, finally, yeah! finally Black Widow. It took them so many years to come out with that. Gunpowder Milkshake, Thunder Force, and the list goes on and on and on. Granted, this movie was released in a time where female empowerment was just beginning to take a front seat and feminism was on the rise once again. But I just can't help but notice how many movies we're seeing nowadays actually movies in particular that have a female lead and in my opinion Sucker Punch was just kind of revolutionary. I think it really opened the doors for these kinds of movies to come forth. I'd also like to note that several scenes were cut out after the original release of this movie. Some of the scenes which I consider to be the most important scenes which is really disappointing. I don't know why they were cut. My favorite scene is at the ending of the movie where Baby Doll is given by Blue to the high roller who is the most anticipated character to show on screen. They'd been mentioning his name throughout the entire movie and he's a parallel to the lobotomy doc. Baby Doll is afraid he's going to take advantage of her body, but the high ruler reveals he isn't interested in her body. What he's after is her mind. I somehow managed to mess this whole part up. This scene is really important, but it's important because the high roller talks about the difference between consent and force, and he talks about how what he desires is for Baby Doll to willingly give herself to him. He wants her to fully open up her mind to being with him without him having to force her, and it basically is just talking about the difference between consent and force, which is what the whole movie is about. The difference between exploitation and empowerment is consent, and that's the entire point of the movie. So I don't know how I managed to mess this entire part up. Up, but I did, so I, I'll just include the scene. I lack the one thing money can't buy. Love. Close. Truth. You're supposed to give yourself to me. It's completely physical. I might have your body, but the real you, that 
intangible and undefinable spark that is you. Well, that you I will never know. And yet that is precisely what I want. All I require from you is a sliver of a moment to have you not by force, but simply as a man and a woman. To see in your eyes that simple truth that you give yourself to me freely. Not because you have to, but because you want to. He says to Baby Doll that while he may have control over her body, he will never have control of her mind, which he finds to be the most powerful and interesting thing about her. He asks her to give herself to him completely because that's what he truly desires, a woman who will willingly hand her mind to him and his to her. Quite honestly, I found this scene to be the most important scene of them all, because here Zack Snyder is telling us flat out that we have complete control over our minds. Our minds, in the words of Zack Snyder, are a gift that no one is able to control but us. I wish this scene was included because it's just so raw and valuable and important to the overarching message that this movie has to say. I'd like to mention the visuals of this movie because without talking about them, that would just kind of be a crime. This movie is absolutely visually stunning. First off, I'd like to kind of talk about the costumes in particular, which a lot of people thought were too revealing. But I personally, when you connect them to the movie overall arching message, I found them to be like truly beautiful. Like Baby Doll's iconic fight outfit, honestly, it's just so badass. Like I love it. It reminded me personally of like an anime character, like a strong female anime character. I'm sure he probably took inspiration from like animes in particular because it's just too uncanny. It reminds me a lot of like a Sailor Moon kind of character. Maybe he got inspo from her. I don't know. I didn't look that up but <laughs> I think that's also part of the reason why she was branding the name Baby Doll. It's just kind of like this fantastical like comic book name I guess. Okay so I take this back as well. She was given the name Baby Doll because he wanted to emphasize the point that women were sexualized and objectified to such a point that they didn't even know or mention any of the girls real names. I don't know why I like assumed it was just a cutesy little cartoon name because that's literally like insulting to the entire point I'm trying to make here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I realize. I'm sorry. In fact, at the end of the movie when Baby Doll is about to go on stage for her final performance, she's shown wearing a more glittery version of her fantasized fighting gear, which I thought was a nice touch. It's as if Baby Doll saw her final wardrobe, the one she would be wearing right before her lobotomy, and turn it into something powerful within her fantasy fight scenes. Instead of being the outfit she was trapped in, it was the outfit she led battles in. It was truly a remarkable touch on the wardrobe department's end. There's no denying that the actresses took these seemingly skimpy outfits and made them just flat out badass. Zack Snyder's imagination is just astounding. The CGI in this movie transports us to another world, one of victory, loss, and bravery. So many of the shots are just visually stunning. The actresses said in an interview that his vision for the movie is what drew them to it, and I must say that that's true. It really is just part of the allure of this movie. <laughs> I said I'm going to talk about theories because there's been a lot of theories about this movie. In all honesty, like I said, this movie took a really long time for me to digest. After watching it for a second time, I was able to comprehend the overarching message that I had to offer. But after watching it a third time, I wanted to understand it fully. So I took to YouTube and I watched a plethora of videos, all of which helped me to understand the meaning of the movie as well as several compelling theories. I will link all of my favorites below because I think that you should give them a watch. They're all very well done and they provide really interesting commentary and insight to the movie that I didn't catch myself. And they add a lot to the conversation, I think. My favorite theory that I found was from ASC series on YouTube. I will be linking their video down below. The theory suggests that Baby Doll is just a conjured angel representing Sweet Pea's physical embodiment within Sweet Pea's mind to give her the opportunity to escape into her elaborate fantasy, which wouldn't be too far-fetched. I mean, in the beginning, she has that quote where she says, everyone has an angel, a guardian who watches over us. You can't know what form they'll take one day old man, next day little girl. And it would change check out that the little girl she's referencing is in fact Baby Doll. There are also several other characters that Baby Doll takes notice of within her fantasy, one of them being the younger boy and then one of them being the older man who actually leaves them in a bottle in every single fight scene. And Sweet Pea sees the boy when she's making her escape back home when she's getting on the bus and she also sees the old man when she gets on the bus and he ends up being the bus driver. So this theory may be... Did you really have to rev your engine at 714? 
Yeah. This theory may be accurate. If it's true, and Baby Doll is only a conjured angel within Sweet Pea's mind, as well as the other two characters mentioned, it would check out that Sweet Pea's escape back home on the bus is only a fantasy that she imagines as she endures the reality of her lobotomy. So if you'd like to like see a more like understandable and more condensed version of that theory, I will be linking that video below and I really do think you should watch it. There are many theories that offer different perspectives and observations to the movie and I think each one adds a new layer, a new perspective to the conversation. All the theories about this movie are a reminder of how complex the movie is and how much room Zack Snyder allowed for our imaginations to interpret his story. It's another thing I really appreciate about this movie is that this movie is so imaginative but it also leaves so much room for everyone to interpret their own different things in the movie. It really is a reminder about how powerful our minds are. I think it's really interesting that he allowed so much wiggle room for us to imagine and interpret. Even though it seems so surface level, it's it's really, it has so many levels and so many conversations within itself. This adds to the beauty of the movie as well as the message Zach has to send about the power of our minds, how much of a gift they are, and how alluring and different they are to that of others. So I'm gonna wrap this up. This might be one of my shorter videos. There's a lot of other conversations to be had, but I just really wanted to remind everybody about how fantastic of a movie this was. So basically, Sucker Punch is just flat out misunderstood, both in the sense that literally no one understood it at first, and also in the sense that people hated it without proper reasoning. When you begin to digest what the movie is actually about, you're given the pleasure of opening your mind to new perspectives, layers, and commentary that this movie holds, because there's just so much within it. I personally see this movie to be Zack Snyder's best and most underappreciated work, especially in comparison to the new Suicide Squad, which I just honestly thought was a piece of trash. Sorry, Zack Snyder, you're, you're brilliant, but that movie was just kind of... Sucker Punch stands as a calling for women to take power over their bodies through the power of their minds, to take back stereotypically male cultural stories and roles, own our sexuality, and fight against the patriarchy. By taking exploitation and turning it into empowerment, we could show the world how incredibly powerful we can be beyond our physical embodiment, as well as how much a gift of our minds can be. This movie is a Sucker Punch of a reminder to use our weapons and fight against the patriarchy. So thank you for watching. If you have any other commentary, like I said, please leave it below. I'd love to have a conversation. I just like to say that I wasn't trying to attack this person in the video I just think that they spoke for the general populace when the movie first came out about like what the general idea and opinion of this movie was and I kind of wanted to debunk it so I just used their video as reference because they were obviously very angry and upset about it and I just thought it was like a good video to include because it just sums up everybody's opinion of the movie at the time but I think lately there's been a resurgence of appreciation I just really wish that it existed when the movie first came out because the movie is just so good the ratings are so low which I think is really undeserving. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's all I have to say. I appreciate you watching, and I'd also like to mention that I've reached over 100 subscribers. Last time I remember checking, I was only at like 30 something, and I've had a lot of subscribers come in recently. A lot of people have been watching my past two deep dives and adding a lot of interesting commentary and perspectives, which I really appreciate. I read all the comments, and I love talking with people about different perspectives. I think it's really interesting. Everyone who commented, is really smart and they all have a lot to offer so i appreciate you for watching those and i appreciate you for watching this one and i hope that after this either you go watch the movie or you rewatch the movie or i don't know um enjoyed the video <laughs> thank you for watching have a wonderful night i will see you in the next one bye